Check. Yes. Got another one for you. Uh oh. <laughs> Why you got uh oh when I'm trying to trying to bring bring wisdom and enlightenment to you? I love the wisdom and enlightenment. It's just that I never know what to expect. Where it's coming from. Or where it's gonna okay. come from. All right, all right. Okay. All right. So this one is I got Earth. All right. I got all manner of spheres in my office. Yes. Right? And this is among them. Let me yank this off its axis. My favorite here. planet. Yeah, it's my favorite planet too. Oh, good. good. Yeah. The difference is, of course, in space, it doesn't look like this because in space, there are no color-coded countries. Ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> in space, there is ocean and land and clouds. Nice. And as as nature intended, Earth to, to look. look. <laughs> Funny how it works out that way. <laughs> so <laughs> I just wanted to impress upon you how smooth Earth actually is. Okay. We think of it as, well, how could it be smooth? It's got hills and mountains. And valleys. And valleys and, and oceans and trenches that's, in the oceans. That's right. And, and all of this. And so, and even this globe itself, it has bumps on it. It does. All right. So let's go to the, the biggest bump range. That would be like uh, just above India and Nepal. Okay. So we get the Himalayas. The Himalayas. Right. So you feel that. Okay. <laughs> all right. So there it is. Right. So they're trying to tell you, yeah, Earth is not smooth. Lots That's of bumps. Th this is where they're trying to, and so it's not only there. You get it in the like the Apennines and the and the Rocky Mountains are over here, of mm -hmm. course, in the United States. And then it's, it's not slightly high as high um, the Appalachian Appalachian mountains. Appalachian mountains, of course. All right. So we get little bumps. Some are bigger than others. Okay. All right. So they're just trying to give you the essence of the fact that Earth is not smooth. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Earth is smooth. Okay. Earth is so smooth. So, how smooth <laughs> is it? That if you were some giant and your finger was actually this big right. relative to Earth, okay. if you close your eyes and rubbed your finger across Earth, All right. it would be one of the smoothest things you ever touched. So you're saying that we wouldn't feel these little representations? Let me tell you why I don't think so. Okay. Okay, first of all, the actual height of these mountains, if Earth were this size, mm -hmm. would be about the height of the the, the the depth of your fingerprint. Oh wow! And that's nothing. That's nothing. Right. That's nothing. And so, therefore, what? How much are they lying to you here? I will tell you. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. So you know how high Mount Everest is. Okay. You know how high? No, I don't know. How, okay. I mean, I know it's high, but I don't yeah, know you, the you, actual. You can't just recite. I the can't number. recite okay, the number. Okay. So twenty eight thousand feet. Twenty eight thousand feet to the summit feet, to above the sea level. Okay. Not not above the land around it. Right. Above sea, sea level. Sea level. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So this bump. Oh, by twenty eight thousand feet, how many miles is that? You know, five and a half, maybe five and a half, six miles. Right. Somewhere in there. In there. Five between five and six miles. Right. If you calculate how big this bump would be given the size of the Earth, it'd be 83 miles high. This bump here? Yes. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Okay. Right. 83 miles. 83 miles. Yeah. 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 So this, this is lying to you. Right. right. And almost all geologic globes that give you the bumps and the ridges and the thing, they're lying it's to you. It's just a little exaggerated. A lot exaggerated. Exactly. A lot exaggerated. Mm -hmm. So this feeds our belief that somehow Earth is a very terrained place. Right. Not only that, what is the highest point on Earth's surface uh, above sea level? That would be, uh, where, where did I go? Where did you go? There you go. That'd be Mount Everest. Do you know the lowest point on Earth's surface? The trench. Trench. Let's go around to the trench. Oh, I, I could have gone the short way. Okay. <laughs> the Marianas Trench. You just picked up a lot of frequent flyer miles. <laughs> <laughs> so the Marianas Trench right. is off the coast of the Philippines. Okay. Okay. So that's where the Philippine Islands there. So that goes down something like 30, 35,000 feet. It's like six miles down. So, okay. Okay. So that means the all variations in elevation on Earth from top to bottom, from top to bottom, can be contained within a dozen miles. Right. That's not a lot. It's not a lot. Not at all. A dozen. Right. A, a dozen miles. How wide are we? Again, we're in miles here. Sorry for you metric folk. Yes, exactly. Okay. By the way, catch up. <laughs> if you are on the metric system, get with the program. America. You, There's America. Damn America, it. damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. So if you only have about a dozen miles across a diameter of 8,000 miles, that's right. the diameter of the Earth. That is small. That's nothing. That is so small. If you shrunk this, shrunk... Earth down to a cue ball, right? For in billiards, it'd be one of the smoothest cue, cue ball ever built, right? Ever, yeah. 
again, you rub your finger on a cue ball. I don't feel anything. You feel first. nothing. You don't feel nothing. And as what would happen if you did it on the earth here? So that's all. That's all I'm trying to say. Earth is a very a very smooth, smooth sphere. Man. Wow. See, now there will be people who will say you are wrong because I can see mountains. And you are wrong it's because I can see valleys. Yeah, it's because you are littler than the, <laughs> than the bumps and wiggles. That's very okay? funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? If, if you were an ant right. crawling on a beach, you'd say, like, man, it's hills and dales exactly, or something. Right, exactly. Oh, my gosh. All I mean, these what, dunes are amazing. <laughs> right. we, we, you're just walking across them as a human being. Right. So it's just a matter of what your size is. This is part of the problem with flat earthers because we are so tiny, right. you're only seeing such a small section of this huge curved surface. It doesn't come to you ac across to you as it's a curved surface right. because your exposure to it is so small. So this is part of what it, the, the cosmic perspective is, just rethinking how the world looks to you and ask, is there something fundamental about that? Or are you, are you stuck thinking something is true that is not? Or thinking something that is not true, that, that is. is right. Yeah. And so, with respect to other planets mm -hmm. um, that we know of, I'll, I'll say in our neighborhood. Forget, uh -huh. forget exoplanets that we found. Uh, how smooth are we compared to them? Excellent question. So it turns out the moon is slightly less smooth than we are. Okay. So their big mountains relative to the moon's diameter are a little higher. Okay. And so you know why? Well, okay, why? There's not as much gravity there. Ah. What you know? What the ultimate limit on how high a mountain is going to get on the moon is how much the damn mountain weighs. Right. All right. And, and you're holding up with just rock. Rock ain't infinitely strong. Right. Exactly. All right. So at the base of the rock, is it can it hold it up, or will it start to succumb under pressure and flatten out? And it, so yeah, there's a limit to how high the mountains will ever be on the earth, just for that reason. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and you never think of that. You never think. There's a reason why mountains can only be so high. Right, right. So, and the, the smaller the object is, or the less gravity it has, the more you can have a distortion relative to its size. Right. And that's why there are some asteroids that are potato-shaped. Yes. All right, they're not spheres. Right. Because their rocks can get any shape they want without gravity forcing it back into a sphere. So anyway, we live in Manhattan, which is about a dozen miles top to bottom. Right. That's the full difference between, between the lowest point on Earth's crust and the highest point on Earth's crust. Wow. And you can drive that in 10 minutes. I was going to say that's not nothing. Not traffic, but you can yeah. drive. Well, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, it's nothing. Right. It's nothing. There uh, so go. check, there's the story right there. there. Okay. Right. Oh, wait, wait, one other quick thing. Um, since gravity will prevent mountains from getting very high, right. you might ask, well, what object has the strongest gravity of them all? Ooh. Okay, so you get uh, neutron stars. Right, that's true. Which, have which is a failed black hole. A failed black hole, yeah. And they, they don't want to be called that, but that's... <laughs> Sorry, neutron. <laughs> neutron star. So uh, neutron stars, very severe surface gravity. And in fact, let me tell you how severe the gravity is. If you had a sheet of paper mm -hmm. on it, the thickness of the paper... To ascend the width of the sheet of paper, we'd be like you climbing a cliff face in the energy you'd have to expend to do that. Wow. So, in fact, neutron stars don't let anything get too far out of, out of, out of alignment there. A little it's, clingy. <laughs> so neutron stars are the smoothest objects in the universe. Oh, for cool. For that reason. Because of the gravity. Because of the gravity. Yeah, That's it's, right. it's almost like it's compact. You know what everything. gravity wants to do? It wants to pull every part of it as close to the center as possible. Come here, I love you. And if something's a little sticking up a little too high, it's going to yank it back in. That's right, get in line. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, so there you have it, Earth and its bumps and wiggles. There you go, the Earth, smooth but not flat. <laughs>